All right. We had a flea market about 30 miles away in a town called Hillsville, Virginia. And uh, the one on a Friday, this thing uh, runs through Memorial Day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And Friday I went in. This year, uh, you know, pickings were pretty bare when it came to comics and stuff. I actually think I went through the whole thing in less than three hours. And then some friends actually had a table that they were selling things, and they let me have a little spot. So I hurried up and came up with two boxes of comics and some Nerf guns and odds and ends and got me a little corner there and actually ended up making some of my money back. Uh, so, you know, I'm all burnt, sunburnt and, you know, wore out, you know, but it's a, it's a good, it's a good tired. Okay, so, ended up getting some comic books from Friday and then there's another guy who has apparently opened up this little shop where he sells used DVDs uh, that are actually high quality and stuff. Uh, Four dollars a piece, three for ten dollars. I talked to the guy for a little bit. We talked movies back and forth, and ended up actually getting a bunch of movies for ten bucks on Friday. And then I went back and got even more movies in for uh, uh, I think I don't know fifteen or something. And then all the comic books I got, they're all I got them all less than a dollar. It was a whole lot of getting a stack, talking them down. They, it was just about everybody wanted a dollar a piece for their books, and then I would get you know. I don't know, like, eight, I'd, I'd, I'd get like eight, you know, I don't know, ten comics or something and talk them down to like seven bucks or six bucks, so I don't know what it all comes to. So, uh, but what was cool about the guy that sells the DVDs is that if it's in a, if, it, if it's, if it's in a case, I'll buy, you know, if it's in a case, it's four dollars, it's considered one thing. So he had season sets of uh, shows and stuff that were still supposed to be four dollars and stuff, and of course, you know, do the flea market and stuff, you know. We got a deal on them. So quickly to go through some of this. Okay, Star Wars Tales is a series that uh, through Dark Horse, I don't know, started around 2000, 2001 or something. And they're very thick, sort of an anthology series, a lot of short stories. Some are humor, some expands on the movie, some are just really cool takes. And not only does this have uh, Lando Calrissian on the cover, the suavest mofo in the universe, uh, but it has a story that is drawn by Eric Powell. It's a Greedo story. Um, and I just kind of stopped flipping through it and stuff because I want to actually sit down and read it. You know, this is, it seems like he was doing Goon at the time and stuff. And he ends up scoring, you know, a Star Wars, you know, tale of his art. And uh, I think that's pretty cool, man. A little, you know, you know, when the guy was down in the trenches, you know, trying to make a name for himself. All right, then we get uh, this Star Wars tales. This is number six. And this is an awesome, awesome cover. I remember seeing these like in food lines and stuff uh, when they were coming out. And you know, I never bought them or anything. Uh, but yeah, this this is awesome, man. It's got a Darth Vader story, a Boba Fett story, a Yoda story, and apparently a Luke Skywalker story. And there's 64 pages. That is just so cool, you know. And if you guys know your Star Wars lore and stuff, you'll know the significance of uh, Darth Vader holding, you know, C-3PO's head. So I'm thinking this particular story. Uh, ties into Empire Strikes Back, you know, between the scenes. So, all right, and then we have Troops, right? This is number 10, 64 pages again, and it's got a big ass story by Garth Ennis and John McRae of uh, Hitman fame, if you will. And Garth Ennis has done Preacher and The Boys and all kinds of stuff. And uh, you know, I can't wait to read this one. You know, his take on the troops. This could be funny or this could be twisted. It, it, I'm not going to go with funny because you know this is Lucas Arts that he's writing for, right there with the Lucas Books logo, meaning that people at you know the Lucas Farm or whatever you know approves the story. They used to say that uh, George, they whoever they are. The grapevine used to say that uh, everything is approved by George Lucas. That is part of the expanded universe. I find that hard to believe. Was you know. And then I found all of these, and I got these for less than a dollar. And I'm very happy to find these. I had to work for these. Okay. But what we have here is Jack Kirby's Black Panther from the 70s. You know, Copper Age there. And I got number nine right here on top because I want to show you something that was very cool in this, and I just it just cracked me up. All right, we have, we pick up our story with Black Panther carrying somebody through uh, the Sudan Desert. Is that right? 
Uh, you know, you get the point. She's on, she's down. And uh, as he's going along, you know, he finally, you know, the heat starts getting to him. He's dehydrating. And as he crawls through the desert, you know, in that curvy, uh, gr gritty way and stuff, he looks up and there's a robot staring at him. All right, so it's the Marvel Universe. I'm like, oh no, aliens, you know. Um, let's skip ahead here. Let me find a page. I want to review some of these books, so, you know, these curvy books. So anyway, we wake up with our hero as he looks around. He's surrounded by a green alien, another robot, uh, a lady who seems to come off as a princess, and you know, as you look at him, stuff. And the lady's even uh, giving him milk. And then all of a sudden, this man comes in. Anyway, while she's giving him the milk to him, we're talking like he's really dressed like that, and he's not one of us, you know. And they're like, "Yep, he was." And uh, she's telling her the milk's refreshing and stuff. Then all of a sudden, a director comes in, and the robot lifts his head. And it's a movie set. Now, yeah, right there he is. And there's the guy lifting the robot head. Uh, he comes in, and we have, uh, this is in 1978. Black Panther, uh, if you read between the big broad lines here, has crawled upon the uh, shooting of Star Wars. You know, changed so they don't get sued. Uh, <laughs> the chat has walked, you know, they're probably if they're in the desert they're shooting a scene on Tatooine and the milk is funny because that's what uh, Uncle Ben and Uncle Owen were uh, drinking you know while they were talking to Luke and stuff but it was blue milk and stuff so Kirby had a little bit of a sense of humor because he wrote me and edited all these so yeah Black Panther ran across the uh, shooting of Star Wars okay and, and these books are really great shape uh, flat spines no rips little dings you know maybe on the corners and stuff here and there but uh, there's number seven. Like I said, less than a dollar a piece. Kirby Gold. Number six. Quirky book, though. Quirky. Don't don't get me wrong. Number four. And number three. And I think I had like one and two and a couple other of these. I think Kirby just did the first 12, you know. I think I hit a spot where I walked way, 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 way out. And I was going through some books, and I found two books, and one was like in really crappy condition, but I went ahead and got it, and I got this book, and there's a whole bunch of them, and I started looking real close to the books, they were a dollar a piece, and some of the books were chewed on down the spine by rats and stuff, and you know, beat up and everything like that, so I was like, man, after all that work of going through those boxes, I'm getting something, and I got this, Marvel Universe number one, the official handbook of the Marvel Universe. Uh, this is, what is this from 1982 and this was sort of like the blueprint because it came out with an expanded edition and stuff this is just for you guys that are don't know these are wraparound you know first of all they have a wraparound cover of all the characters and what they did is these official handbooks go through the Marvel Universe characters in the alphabetical order and they do things like give you maps home of the Norse guard God so Asgard had its own um, section in here and uh, and then, just like I said, uh, the characters get little bios. You get their a little short history on them. You get their stats of height and weight. And then the ex explanation of their powers. Uh, all drawn by different artists. You know, they have people come in. And like I said, there's, you know, and this ran in an expanded edition. And I've done a video explaining the origin of all this with Pete Sanderson. And uh, DC's Who's Who and everything like that. Where this all came from. The other book I got from there, and this is what I'm saying about them being beat up, you had to look. I was real excited because I found Deadpool number 11. I, I gave this, I think I sold this or gave this away as a prize or something one time. But, you know, you had to look real close because it's about to come off the spines and stuff. So, you know, this is just sort of have a completest. Yeah, the, the, the spine. The uh, staples are stressed. You know, the cover is starting. You know, I can't well see it. But uh, there's little rips on each side of the staples, and it wouldn't take much to, you know, get them disconnected. Which is sad, because this is pretty funny. He, this is the issue where Daredevil, Daredevil, I'm tired. Where Deadpool actually, I'm not sure how he does it, but, you know, he goes into a Silver Age comic of Spider-Man. That's, that's, you know, Spider-Man. I don't know if he time travels or anything like that, but, you know. They, uh, you know, there's some pages there. Looking very Ditko-ish, Craven the Hunter. And then Dare, Dare, Deadpool kind of weaves his way in there. Deadpool, Deadpool. Got Daredevil on the mind. 
Okay. Some other stuff I found, if you're with me. I was really happy to find these, Sex and Violence of Sin City. I've never seen this. I have never seen this, and it seems like I might have seen the chick in the blue dress either in another story or maybe a re reprint. Real happy to find that. And I don't know if I have this or not, but I got it just in case. I'm trying to complete this one. Uh, Frank Miller, Hell and Back. It was nine issues. And the, from what I got, this is an artist. This guy is an artist in, in Sin City. You know, So that was number one of nine. Okay. Now, I was real excited to find this. I'm going to end up getting these. And somebody that I was uh, talking to at the flea market was just spot on on their horror comics. Um, they don't know a lot about comics. But, man, you bring in, you know, some horror stuff, you know, movie horror and stuff like that, and anything that ties into those movies, he's right on it, man. Or maybe it was my buddy Tim. No, it was my buddy Tim. I did talk to a guy about that, but not about the Hellraiser comics. But then my buddy Tim uh, knew how many issues of Hellraiser was put out by the Epic Line of Comics. And uh, this has stories by, with pencils by Mike McNola. And then what really made me fall down and... And, you know, is that it's Russ Heath. Not only is Russ Heath doing some horror, but he's working at Marvel, and that's something that I'm just not, you know. Russ Heath is an, it was an awesome, awesome, one of those old school guys, you know. Look up Russ Heath, man. He did some great stuff. All right, then I got these less for a dollar, and these are just churning along, man. All right, Deadpool number 44 uh, from, this is, I'm trying to think. Because we've got some Deadpool guys on here. I don't want to mess it up. Anyway, I'm thinking this was like 2001, 2000, something like that. Uh, this was his first ongoing series, you know. Uh, I think, you know. And uh, anyway, here's 44. A little Black Panther again. Uh, number 43. Okay. And then I found this one again in Wednesday Serial. Our uh, Wednesday Serial... Uh, commented when I sh had got this book before this makes my second copy and told me that you know this is worth a little bit so here's number 54 it's a uh, Steve Dillon color cover and uh, this was actually one of Garth Ennis's uh, and Steve Dillon's Punisher covers where this would have been Daredevil man it's all going to Daredevil and Black Panther tonight uh, yeah number 60 another Weapon X story that's a double. And then we also have a double. Here's number 57. Looks like I got him out of the water with a great Barry Winsler Smith cover. That's a double. And actually, look. Look. See there? And then look on the shelf. There's the other one. That is pure coincidence. I did not know that. Okay. So we can play Sesame Street. Near. Far. Near. Far. Should have worked on my Grover voice. And I was really happy to do this. I paid two bucks for a comic. Two dollars. Didn't even try to haggle. Just said, what do you want for it? Yes, it's beat up. Yes, it's got a little rip. It's on the cover. Uh, there's some stress on the thing, but it's complete. It's all here. And it was a free promotional comic from, I think, 1972 or something, 73, where Marvel Comics presents Evil Knievel. You know how happy I am to see that? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I was really cool to find this, you know, because back in the day, you know, my heroes were, you know, Fonzie, Evil Knievel. I mean, he was a god back then. Everybody started making ramps and riding their bikes and jumping ramps and becoming daredevils and popping willies. And it was awesome. Awesome. Okay, so that ran a little bit long, so I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to do a DVD uh, video separate, okay? So, all right, carry on.